Okay, so back in about 1988, I bought this uh, Mako Comet. Um, three elements vertical, three elements horizontal. As you can see, there's no vertical elements on it anymore, but uh, this has been a really, really good performing antenna for me. I'm very happy with it. But on a whim, just for shits and giggles, I ordered up a little bit bigger beam. I don't really need one. I mean, I'm happy with the performance of this. But I had an extra couple hundred bucks just burning a hole in my pocket. So we're gonna put up a new antenna, and uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you what it is uh, until uh, until we get it up there. The antenna off to the side there is a um, Channel Master uh, TV antenna, and that's on a Channel Master remote controlled rotor. And uh, I live up here <clears throat> in the boonies. So the closest TV uh, transmitter to my house is approximately 40, 42 miles. And um, then they fan out from there. And this setup works pretty good, so I'm kind of sharing the tower with the, uh, with the uh, TV antenna and the CB antenna. So over here, what I did is I built this little standoff arm here. And... Uh, it works pretty good. It, the antenna, I can turn the antenna 360 degrees. Uh, actually, I can turn both of them 360 degrees and none of them interfere with each other as far as physically. Electrically, I don't really care. It doesn't matter. I doubt it's really going to be a, a huge factor. I never noticed a, any, any difference. So, anyway, I'm going to say goodbye to my old friend, my half a comet. She's been with me a long time been a damn good antenna but we're going to uh we're going to kick it up another notch so stay tuned okay so this is how i take my tower down i undo the bolts at the bottom and then use the tractor and then i'll just roll forward and hopefully set her down on that ladder Okay, so I'm getting ready to put this thing up on the tower, check the SWRs and everything, but some more crappy design issues that high gain has. Now, I, you know what, I haven't put a high gain antenna together for, well, since the 80s, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm having a problem with the way this boom joins. They have a right here down in there i don't know if you can see it but there's the split what you do is you slide you slide this this section in and this section in and there's a piece that goes in the middle here and they do that to join these this boom together and then they you have a piece that's in there about this long that you slip in and it has two holes in it okay well what happens is they move within these holes so this can actually twist. This one can twist independently from this one. Now I've tightened the shit out of these almost to the point where they're going to collapse. I don't want to collapse them, but they still will move. And this is where I'm getting the, I think where I'm getting, there's just enough play in there where I'm getting uh, the boom to droop. The, the boom's kind of droopy. It's a saggy long john is what it is. So I don't like the way they put those together. Um... The material here, I don't know if this shit's made in China now or what, but look at this. The design here is in such a way that if you want to go and back that up with a with an open end or a box end or anything, you can't get to it. Even with my trusty, this is my, oh come on, get in the picture here. This is my lucky antenna. 386 7 16th wrench. I've had this ever since I was a kid. I've probably put up, I've used this tool to put up almost every antenna I've owned in 50 years. And they have it in such a way here where the quarters are so close, you can't, 
see you can't get in there. So what you got to do is you got to take something and bend this. Well, <laughs> look at this. This is I don't want to keep bending it, but this is just crap metal. Absolutely crap. I'm trying to like this antenna. This some bitch better perform cuz uh this newer high gain stuff sucks, man. I don't know if this is what Jew did with this at MFJ or or what, but this is just crap. And another thing is too on this boom, like this half of the boom here and this part of the boom here where it's split here, they sit and they turn like this. Okay? And if you try to buckle down on this, as you see what happens, see it starts deforming. Oh god. I think I wasted 300 bucks. I'm going to I'm going to go over here for a second. All right. Here's how they do it on these old Makos. You know, I think I'm going to buy another Mako and put up. This is this is just crap, but you know, back in the day we used to complain about these little nipple hub things, but this thing's 30 years old and it's never broken one. I've had this thing in hellacious windstorms, microbursts, um, 70 mile an hour gusts, ice storms, snow. They've never busted, never. Right? And look at this, look at this clamp here. Look at this, this is how they, they do the mass clamp here. We're not fucking around with this stuff, right? <sighs> this high gain shit, man. I don't know. We'll see. We'll just put the locking bolts in at the base there, and we're sucking good to go. Okay, she's all installed, looking good. I have really good SWRs. Fairly decent bandwidth. So we'll see how long it lasts. Anyway. That's the uh, high gain LJ115. Pretty, <clears throat> it's pretty easy to calculate the element lengths and whatnot from <coughs> the little chart that they give you. And I just took and centered this thing. Uh, it'll go from uh, well, legal CB band one through forty, just fine. Okay. She looks pretty. Well, time will tell. Okay, guys, thanks for watching.